Okay. Find the wood. Are we ready? No, you're fine. I mean, you just have to keep it. Well, so like go jump up and down or something. Yeah. Like when you're texting on your phone. I'm gonna get that on here. Okay. Lights, camera, action. All right, hi guys. So our presentation is on autism, and specifically it's going to be talking about how it's going to affect you as teachers in inclusion classrooms. So we'd like to start off um, by looking at today's agenda. <laughs> and uh, if you could raise your hand and please read aloud the bullet points of today's agenda. Yes, Kyle. I've never gotten called on to do this, so. <laughs> Future candidates will learn the definition of autism. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Future candidates will learn the current research that seeks to understand the root causes of autism. Sydney. Future candidates will become familiar with the autism spectrum. Anyone else? Future yeah. candidates will learn accommodation strategies and theories about Awesome. All right, so basically we just want to let you know that um, we obviously need to follow the lesson um, on the PowerPoint, but we'd also like you to take additional notes Feel free to use your computer, however, we just want to reiterate that it's not to be used for Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, etc. It's for note taking. Okay, so first we're going to start off with a quick YouTube video where we can look at one individual girl uh, with autism. She is a high school student. And her name is Erica. Someone with autism is able to do what their what, how their brain works, with, um, what they what they can accomplish. Um, there are still a lot of misconceptions out there among society, but also in, within the school system. And um, I think that the more and more prevalent autism becomes in our society, the word spreads that hey, this person has autism, but they they might not fit these five facts that I know about. person with a big personality um, who loves to joke around, um, who desires um, relationships with people. Um, as a person with autism, um, she experiences some communication barriers. However, um, in other aspects of her life, I think her autism helps her really excel at a lot that she does because it, she, she, the stimulation I think she gets from a lot of activities and her ability to focus her um, quite a while on one specific task. Um, really, this overall makes her a little productive and, and happier person. Volunteer. Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> autism spectrum disorder. Autism 
concept of disorder and autism are both general terms for a group of complex disorders of brain development. These disorders are characterized in varying degrees by difficulties in social interaction, verbal and nonverbal communication, and repetitive behaviors. Okay, so Emily, how about in your own words, what does that definition mean? Um, that it's like a wide range of brain development disorders. Does anyone else want to elaborate? What did she say? I'm sorry. She said that autism is a wide spectrum of disorders, not just one. Mm -hmm. So, anyone else? Wesley? I think that uh, <coughs> the definition, like, points out that it's specific things, like social interaction, verbal, I think how it lists those, because a lot of people just think, oh, not very intelligent, or just handicapped, like in all areas, in every way. So I think that's good that it points out the specific things. All right, good point. Okay, so now that you have a general understanding of the definition of the autism spectrum disorder, we're gonna talk very briefly about the causes of autism. Um, a few years ago, uh, one of Research, sorry. Research um, has recently shown that there are some answers to the causes behind autism, but a few years ago we wouldn't have known this. One of the biggest factors is that there is no one cause of autism, just as it, or just as there is no one type of autism, like Emily just pointed out. Um, other other causes behind, uh, so the research has shown that um, causes include both gene changes and mutations, and those are associated with autism, as well as environmental factors. And some of those factors include um, the advanced parental age. So if you had parents who are older, they're more likely to give birth to um, student, um, children with autism. Also, maternal illnesses, obviously illnesses that genetic um, illnesses that are from the mother's side, and also birth Okay, so now we're gonna go into a little bit of what the autism spectrum is. Um, as Emily did a great job of pointing out, um, autism encompasses a lot of different, um, a lot. Of, there's a lot of different levels of it. So if you look here, we have the autism spectrum disorder umbrella. Um, it encompasses a lot of different, uh, no two cases of autism present themselves in the same way. Um, it's different in severity and type depending on the person. And um, in order to be considered a part of the autism spectrum, you must fall within these following criteria. Okay, so basically you have to have uh, persistent deficits in social communication. Autism specifically targets um, poor communication skills um, and a decrease in efficiency in social interaction. Also, it also manifests itself in restricted and repetitive patterns. Um, also, they you have to have present symptoms in early childhood. That means they have to start manifesting themselves at the age of two or three. So. And all of these things must uh, clearly inhibit or limit your everyday functions and your everyday interaction. Um, something else to be aware of if you look on the far side of the autism spectrum umbrella, it talks about pervasive development disorder not otherwise specified. Uh, those are children and adults who do not fall within, fall within all four of those criteria but are still inhibited by factors that affect their everyday function, but they may not specifically fall within specific social communication interactions or having issues but they're still included under the spectrum umbrella. Okay, um, so since all of us are general ed majors, um, it's important to understand that you are not very likely to find a low-functioning autistic student in your classroom. The least restrictive environment for most of these students just will not allow them to be in an inclusion classroom. Um, the studies that I looked at um, said that you were most likely to find a child with Asperger's syndrome, um, so, it, I want to reiterate that this really is a case-by-case case, um, thing that you need to do because not every child is going to react um, to the same accommodations and strategies as you had with a previous student. So you really do need to be cognizant of the student's sensitivities, their preferences, and their interests to really make your lesson plans work for everyone involved. So, um, but we do have several accommodations and general strategies that you can implement that you mo um, will most likely come across. So one factor with these strategies is being aware of physical space for students. Um, some students with autism are just particularly sensitive to bright lights, and so depending on that student's sensitivity, it's a great uh, thing to have sometimes that have the lights off during a lecture. Um, so
sensory overload can be a serious problem for students with autism. So another way to address that is when it's solo, it's time for individual work, allowing these students to wear earplugs so they're not distracted by uh, other conversations in the room. And another way that this can affect the whole class is maybe a, if you have a class with a student uh, with autism in it, then there are more strict rules in that class about speaking out of turn. Because if students speak out of turn or their side conversations, it's harder for everyone to focus, especially students with autism. Um, and then another physical, physical space awareness factor in having a quiet area. Um, in, ca in case a student needs to take time out, if they get overwhelmed, there's a specific area for them to go to to calm down and find their center again before getting back to work. Um, you also want to make sure that the quiet area is designated as something for the entire class to use. You don't want to single out the student with autism because this is an inclusion classroom. So you are making accommodations for the student with autism, however, you just want to make sure that um, it is open for all students. All right, so one of the most important things that I'm sure everyone has heard that you need to establish a routine with autistic students. Um, daily routines are, I mean, I think they're completely necessary. Um, so basically, at the high school level, you won't really find many students who will need a picture of like a, a school bus saying that they need to go on the bus at this specific time. However, they do need visual organizers and planners so this will probably, you will find um, sheets of paper with their schedule in each and every one of their binders. Um, for example, we have Joey's schedule. And if you're looking at Joey's schedule here, so you see the different color coding, the different color coding that apply to homework assignments or what they are important tests or different things like that. You also saw in the video earlier they were talking about for Erica, they set aside 10 minutes every day for her to dance. Having that routine is extremely important for an autistic and um, in order for them to feel organized and comfortable with what's going on, they need that daily routine. And going off of that, oh, so for the record, there was nothing outside in the hallway. Um, basically, what you just saw, I was looking out the hallway, and I clearly saw something that was really interesting to me. So as a result, Jessica kind of caught up on, and she also loved now, with autistic students, they are not going to pick up on nonverbal communication. So if anyone is looking at the hallway because something really exciting is happening, they aren't going to understand. So that kind of leads up into our next slide, communication. So the important thing with communication is you have to have direct, verbal, concrete cues for them to know what is going to happen next. So avoid idiomatic expressions like, I have a frog in my throat. They aren't going to understand that you don't actually have a frog in your throat. You also need to avoid sarcasm. So they can't pick up on tone. So please don't be sarcastic like me sometimes. So <laughs> another communication uh, idea, for, or another important idea for communication with autistic students is that it's really important to use full sentences to communicate with them, both orally and visually. The need to make complete thoughts is really important for them to be able to fully understand and comprehend the information you're presenting to them. Lots of times in classes we, do, we use bullet points, but with bullet points they will not be able to get the full idea of what is being said. So using full sentences is really important to help them 